Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back to my channel. This is a bit of a last minute video. I changed my mind literally like 10 minutes before I was going to sit down to film this. What I was going to film. So sorry if I kind of ramble on more than usual. <laughs> but today I thought I would share with you some of the reading books I have acquired for Japanese and Korean. So these aren't like learning books, they are just reading books but they're reading books for language learners. So I'll show you what I've got and kind of talk through them briefly. The Tuttle ones I'll probably do more in-depth reviews of at a later stage, but for now I thought I would just share some of the titles with you. So I've actually only got two books of Korean, so I'll start with those. So the first one is Korean Stories for Language Learners. This is by Tuttle. They've recently published this. I think this came out last month, I think, in October. And it comes with a CD. So you can listen to the stories as well. If I just show you... So they start off quite short, quite easy. You can see I've highlighted a couple of words that I wasn't sure of. So they've got the story in Korean, the translation in English, the vocabulary, comprehension questions and a writing activity which I really like because it's all very well reading something but if you don't understand it then it's not really all that helpful and towards the end of the book the stories get longer so that's all one story so there's quite a lot in the later reading passages but that's good because it's kind of building you up so as you go through it'll get harder but hopefully you should be able to understand it and also what I realized this morning when I was looking through them is they actually have things on Korean pronunciation and the Korean writing system it teaches you structures and things like that like how to form uh, what do you call them like the syllable blocks letter blocks, I'm not sure what it's called. It shows you how to form sentences, which I didn't realise it had, so that's actually pretty cool. So even if you're a complete beginner and you don't know anything, you can actually learn the basics of, you know, reading and writing with this book as well. So the next one I have for Korean is Easy Korean Reading for Beginners by Talk to Me in Korean. This is actually a lot thinner than I was expecting if I just show you the difference in thickness between the two. I was expecting it to be like a chunky book and the other books I ordered were a lot thicker but I actually really like this book. If I just show you one, go through one chapter. So it gives you a really short passage and all of the passages are short, they don't get longer, they don't progressively get longer. So even chapter 19 is still only a little bit. So yeah, it gives you a little cartoon to kind of show you the story and then read out loud and practice pronunciation and then translation and then more vocabulary and then little culture tips which I really like, I think that's a nice touch. So yeah, even though all of the stories are simple, like they're quite short, I think it's actually quite nice because they're all different topics so it kind of still teaches you different vocabulary for those situations and I think you can yeah you can download audio files on their website so you can listen to it and repeat for the reading out loud sections yeah I think this is a really really nice little book okay now for Japanese so I'll start with this one because I'm not sure it really counts as a reading book, it's more of a reading text book. But it's Tanoshi Yomimono and it's basically just different kinds of passages for you to read and it's got some different questions and stuff. If I show... I haven't actually used that much in this book. If I show you what I have done. So here it gives you like, yeah, a burger menu and then it's got a little dialogue so someone comes in and asks for a burger it's got the menu you've got and you've got to figure out what it is they want and how much it's going to be and then on this one it's just match the descriptions to the thing so I just read through and if there's any words I don't know I highlight them 
and just write a little note and then I've got a little A7 notebook that I write all the words in so I can go back and kind of learn the new vocab and also in the back it's got what well, it's actually a pull out it's got all the vocabulary words and it's got the translations in English, Chinese, Korean and Vietnamese so if you're learning any of those languages as well you can learn that vocab together okay the next one is Japanese stories for language learners again it's by Tuttle but it's not structured the same as the Korean one the very first story is actually quite long so this is the first story I tried to cover the English so the first story is a good few pages and then it goes through yeah it's got translators notes which I like because obviously some things can't be directly translated and there are certain nuances that can't be translated directly so it's nice that they've included that and then it's got all the vocabulary and expressions which you can see I've highlighted the ones I don't know and then it's got exercises so you've got to select the most appropriate word and then discussion questions to check your understanding so there's not as many stories in this one there's only there's only five stories in this one but they are quite a lot longer and again it comes with the audio cd so yeah i'm kind of working through the first story in that one okay the next one is the penguin parallel text short stories in japanese i don't know if they actually have one for korean i haven't seen one for korean if they did have it in Korean, I would probably buy it, even though I'm not there yet. I think these are for slightly more advanced learners, because even though it says short stories, some of them are a good few pages long. So it's quite a lot of text. But it's literally just got the Japanese on one page and the English on the other, and that's it. There's no questions or anything like that. This is just purely reading. What I did start to do was read through the English, just to kind of familiar my familiarise myself with the story and then I was going to go back and read the Japanese but I just haven't read the Japanese yet because I just can't find the time to do anything <laughs> and then last but not least I've spoken about these ones before let's read Japanese series I have level 1, level 2 and level 3 so they're graded readers so obviously level 1 is easiest level 2 is a bit more difficult it's meant to go, let's see, it's meant to go up to level 6. It's got this little grading system. But I think they've only published up to level 3 at the moment. Um, so yeah, it says how much vocabulary you need to know, how many characters per story. The Europe CEFR levels and the US ACTFL proficiency guideline levels. Which... I'm not quite sure why they didn't include the JLPT levels, because that would make a lot more sense, I think. So, if, like, level 1 is N5 or something, probably level 2 and 5 as well. Maybe level 3 is N4, level 4 and 3, something like, something like that, something more relevant to actually learning Japanese. <laughs> so I'll show you the level 1 book. I've had it for a good few years, it's actually starting to fall apart, the pages are coming out. So I'll show you in this one. So it's just got different stories, I've got really nice illustrations. I think all the stories are illustrated by different people, so there's a lot of different kind of artwork for each story, which is really nice. Yeah, it just goes through each story. Also the pictures help you kind of actually understand what's going on, I find. But yeah, I kind of just read through it, and then sometimes I'll copy out, I copied out Alice in Wonderland and started to translate it and on Tumblr I started to upload um, like by page the text with kind of like the some of the words translated but yeah I'm kind of reading through level 2 at the moment but it is a little bit difficult because I just don't know the vocabulary like vocabulary is something I really need to work on but yeah the third level she looks quite intense it's a lot of kanji oh that's another thing they in the beginning levels they use a lot more 
simple kanji. I mean, obviously the word's going to be simpler, but you know what I mean. So yeah, I've got four four books. There's two volumes for level one, uh, for level two. I'm not sure if they're going to do another volume for level three, but they might just go to level four next. But we'll see. So yeah, those are all my reading books that I have at the moment. I'll link to all of them down below in case any of you are interested in checking them out. I will probably do a more in-depth review of some of these once I've kind of used them a bit more and I'll be probably posting on Instagram as I'm using them to study. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful and interesting to some people if you're looking for more reading books. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video.